Okay. So I went out of order from the notes. No. And, well, I had more fun doing it that way. But I think we covered everything. Let's see. We talked about all the power ratios, specific leaning. We talked a lot about leaning. Um, why, why, and why we lean in aircraft, because we're going up in altitude, the air gets thinner. If we didn't, then it just becomes richer and richer and richer, and then we start losing power, and we're just throwing money at it for no reason. Uh, let's see, we talked about rich of peak, lean of peak, um, talked a little bit about what the manufacturers want you, how, how to lean. Um, when, when do we, uh, when can we, we lean really aggressively lean. Uh, yeah, it was kind of a weird. That's what I was looking for. Yeah, but okay. But is that to say that as I'm at, let's say I'm at eight thousand feet and I'm going to climb to ten thousand, I go full rich as I go full power? No. No, I'm just not aggressively leaning, right? So definitely not lean of peak, but you should be at peak or somewhere around that. Hundred degrees rich of peak. That's absolutely fine. Um, let me see. Security scan. Yeah, I tried not to get that, so. But it came with clothes. Unfortunately, I loaded Adobe Acrobat and it was already in there, and I'm like, ah. All right. Um, best economy. Lean to peak. Uh, I will throw this out. <clears throat> so, in the, the POH, talk about pulling it back until the engine gets rough. There's some talk about why it gets rough. And some people say that you start getting a misfire. It's so lean that you're misfiring. Um, other people say, no, that's absolutely not true. What you're experiencing is one cylinder going significantly leaner than another cylinder because of a mismatch in the way the fuel flows, which is true, that you actually are causing uh, its power problems. So one cylinder's got more power than the other. You know? <clears throat> because you have uneven fuel flows. We talked about backfire and afterfire. Uh, backfire is a... And then afterfire is a... Fire. Yep. Um, yeah. <clears throat> okay. All right, let's try doing something here. Let's see if I can get away with this. Talk about float carburetors. What we're talking about. What's the function of a float carburetor? To mix fuel and air. Fuel and air. Carburetor has only one purpose, and that is to deliver a finely atomized fuel at the correct fuel air ratio to the engine under all operating conditions. Yep. All right. I don't remember there being a little, little pencil. There's a little pencil. Was there a pencil before? Or was it a dot? I think it was just a dot. It was a dot. It was a little cross. That was a pencil. I had it used to that. No, was it? Yeah, it was a little cross thing. Well, now it's not. No. Okay. Talk about carburetors. All right, we'll see how this works out. So let's just pretend, well, I'm old enough. Remember Gilligan's Island? Yes. Oh, yeah. All right, <laughs> Who's, who, is, who is not familiar with the Gilligan's Island? Uh, you guys are missing out on some fine culture right there. Well, so there's Gilligan and Skipper and Marianne and Marianne and Ginger and the professor and Mr. Hal and Lovey. So anyway, seven people, and they uh, they went on a three-hour tour around Hawaiian Islands, and the storm comes up because Gillen screwed something up, and they end up I don't know on this island, and so the whole show takes place on an island, and they make everything they can out of coconuts and bamboo and, and whatnot. So I forgot to speak in the modern generation, Madagascar. How about Madagascar? Oh. Is it Madagascar? <laughs> All right, so same thing. All right. <laughs> If you go way back, there was a great book called, uh, I'm going to get nothing done if I talk like this all night. <clears throat> what was it? Flight of the Phoenix, which is an in interesting book about an aircraft that, I, don't know, I think it's World War II time, that crashed in the um, 
African desert somewhere and they have this airplane and they have to take this airplane that's crashed and they survive for months on end while they make this new airplane out of this old airplane and they fly out. So kind of this scenario. So we're going to, you know, putting all these together, we've, we've unfortunately crash landed on a deserted island and we have to get off the island. And of course, I'm picturing the Beach 18 and the Madagascar there. And uh, so we've got to, uh, you know, we're all, we all survived the crash, but uh, it uh, tore the carburetor right off the bottom of the engines. Other than that, I think we're going to be okay. Got everything else fixed up. So we have got to build a carburetor in, in the Gilligan fashion out of what we can find. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I guess a better scenario, somebody didn't tighten the nuts on the carburetor, it fell off into the ocean, and we, <laughs> it's, we don't even have a carburetor anymore, so we have to build a carburetor. But, uh, you know, none of us being A&Ps at the moment, we have to kind of figure out by trial and error how we're going to make a carburetor. So we know a few things about a carburetor. One, it's supposed to deliver the right amount of air and fuel. The right amount of air and fuel. So, you know, um, we don't have YouTube, obviously. And by the way, I think I figured out what's wrong with this class. You guys spend way too much time watching YouTube things that are not relevant to what's going on. Yes, it's interesting. It's not relevant. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> Look at this, Kevin. It's cool. <laughs> well, even carburetor videos. That's, that's wonderful, but... Well, I'm watching on your own time, though. You know, you guys are like, what is you guys over here watching, who was watching stuff? Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, look, it's Holly Carburetor's uh, assembly line. I'm like, oh. that, that, was, that was the wrong part of the video, but okay. it's just, it was a completely see through carburetor that they made, so you could see everything happening. But you're still not answering the question, well, how does the mixture control work? I don't know. <laughs> not you guys, but. <laughs> we're just trying to find some way to, like, okay. learn better while we're waiting for the GPU. Oh, okay. That's fine. Um, all right, back to this. So we got to build a carburetor. Well, we know a couple of things about a carburetor. One, we know that, uh, that really bugs me, the little pencil thing. I wish I could change that. Nice. I don't like change. Don't like change. It's facing the wrong way. See? It is. Uh, yeah. Everything is wrong. It's just, I think it's the, I updated the smooth drop. You have a down arrow on the end, but like past your eraser. Like you go all, the, right there, arrow. Nope. No. Nope, that's all these Dang. things. Dang. I know. Digital pencil? No. no nope, I'm using the pen. I'll get used to it eventually. We no, won't. No, no. All right. Okay, so we know that you know we've got a. Oh wait, now it's not going to work. There we go. We have a fuel tank. Well, fortunately for us, we've got a, a high wing aircraft with the fuel tank, and we do have some fuel left in there. So you know that's always a good thing. So we got a, three. Well, that's just not working out. Well. There we go. Fuel, because fuel is blue. Blue. All right. So if we're building a carburetor, what color do I need? Still blue. There we go. All right. Not to scale, because I'm I always run out of room when I'm doing this. So we got a fuel pipe coming down. So not to scale. We got to make the carburetor big so we can see what's going on here. This is easier on the board, by the way. All right. So carburetor. Well, what do we have in a carburetor? Float. No float. A needle. Meter. Well, that's a lot of things. Sorry. Well, we got to build this stuff out of coconut. So what do I got? What's what's one of the, the main operating components of? I think that's the main operating component. Well, uh, the, the Venturi. Venturi. I'd say the Venturi. Yeah. Venturi. Right. So we get some coke, some uh, bamboo. Mm -hmm. Of course, I got to draw it kind of two dimensional, but we create a Venturi. Mm -hmm. What's the Venturi for? <laughs> Speeds up the air and decreases pressure. pressure. Well, the neat thing about, and you guys are going to have to take notes because I'm not writing notes right now. You have to kind of follow along and write things. Um, what is, so why, why do we have this in the carburetor? So Without it, you're not going to get any, any fuel being drawn out, are we? Yeah. So the Venturi actually measures, if you will, it measures the air coming in the carburetor. That's our measuring device. It's kind of the, it's the brains right there. When the engine is operating at wide open throttle, 
a lot of air goes through and it creates a lower, lower pressure, which is another way of measuring it. And when very little air is going through, the pressure is not so low, right? All right, so, so we've, we've kind of figured out by committee that we know we got to have a Venturi. So we make a Venturi. Well, what's inside the Venturi? Okay, we got some sort of nozzle. The nozzle, where does it go? Down here, down here? Right in the middle. Okay, so we got a nozzle. Got a little nozzle right there. Well, that's pretty good, huh? All right. And so we want to give this a shot, right? So what, what comes out of the nozzle? Fuel. Fuel, all right. So we'll just connect it to the, connect it to the fuel. And all right, we're ready to get off the island. Of course, we've got to put a little shutoff valve there. Ready to get off the island. So Tobias is going to go in there and start the airplane up. I'm just going real fast. Right. Something up first. So he, he's, he's ready to go. And he said, this really operates slow. So, he, you know, we open this up. And what, what's going to happen here? Fuel flow. Fuel well, rushes in. Well, since, since the tank is above it, it's just well, flow. Flow. Fuel rushes in. And then it's going to drip back down. Yeah. Yep. Oh, hold it. Wait. <clears throat> Shut it. It's just running out. Why? It, so that's not obviously working, is it? No. 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 Okay. So we got to, you know, shut off the fuel. Back up, yay! Back up. All right, so we got to shut off the fuel, and then we got to go to plan B. At least B at this point. <laughs> okay. So what do we need? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need a float system. Some sort of metering system, something. Bowl. So float bowl. All right. Well, you know, thankfully, you know, somebody in here—I don't know who—it gets intermittent YouTube on their phone, and you know, they got seconds of it. Go. Hey, there's got to be like a bowl thing, right? Okay, so we got a bowl thing. So. So, so we can create a bowl thing, All right, a bowl Sorry, thing. <laughs> That's nobody in particular. All right, we got a bowl thing going on here. And so if we, uh, we plumb this into here, All right? And so now what happens? Well, wait a minute, we got to. Fills the bowl. Gravity fills the bowl. All right. All right. So it's like one of those little things, I don't know, you see on, on the interwebs and stuff. Which cup's going to fill up first? Mm -hmm. so, if, so if I I open this up, what's going to happen? It's going to still fill it's going to drain out. Well, yeah, it just the, fills this up and drains bowl. out. Yeah. All right. So, so we need the fuel to stop somewhere so it doesn't run out of here. So where do we want that to stop? Right at the, right at the outlet in the, of the tank. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so right. Below below the the How about right there? Yes. So if the fuel goes to this spot right here and no higher than that, will it run out of my nozzle? No. no. All right. So we got to figure out a way to do that. Float. Well, I don't have float technology yet. Coconut, coconut technology. technology. Small coconut. Well, you guys are way ahead of me here. <laughs> Let's see. Thought this was already open. This is where carb monkey comes into place. <laughs> That's a monkey wrench. This is my carburetor monkey. He's working on a carburetor right there. All right. So we got to somehow get this level to be right there. Well, I suggest that it's probably, well, I guess we're going red. It's probably easier to train a monkey. All right. So we have carburetor monkey. And we're going to teach the monkey that we need this fuel to be right here. So, well, We'll give him a little chain or something. And so he can control this little flapper valve. And we train the monkey that what needs to happen is when the fuel gets to this level, close, close the valve. And as the fuel starts to run out, open it, open it up. So we carve monkey. All right. So, okay. So we give it a try. Yes. Okay. Who's going to start the engine? All right, so you go in there and we crank the engine. We tell Carb Monkey, "All right, kid, do it." And tr he's well trained. It took us a week and a half to train this monkey. And and uh, well, what's going to happen right there? So the fuel comes through, and as the engine starts to crank over, well, I'm going to suggest the first problem we're going to have is that. 
Yeah, is not getting yeah, the yeah. fuel to start. Well, the fuel ran through. It's right at this level. Okay. And he's cranking, cranking the engine. But it's not, it's not. Although we don't have any batteries, so if you watch the Gilligan's Island, you have to have like one of those exercise bicycles with one wheel. And you pedal, it's got like a vine that goes around it to the crankshaft. And so anyway. You have to have an idle. You don't have to have an idle. But are we going to get any fuel out of this discharge nozzle? No. Why not? Because it's yes. not low enough pressure. Why is it not low enough? Because there's not enough air. Low. Okay, there's not enough air flowing through. The air velocity is so low that it, the Venturi has no effect. We'd have to get a very tiny Venturi for that. Mm -hmm. But then it won't work at higher RPM. Then it wouldn't work at higher RPM. So we've got this big, well, how are we going to get it started? With an idle, with a smaller diameter. Smaller <laughs> section of well, that just makes a lot of, well, well, I'm glad I'm not on an island with you guys. <laughs> Why not a primer system? Yeah. There you go. Okay, so the airplane has a primer. So you can start it off the primer, give it a nice shot of prime, right? And sometimes, I'll even do this with the GP, I'll show you, you can hit the starter and run it off the primer. So you could do that, start it up off the primer, and if it, once the engine starts going off the primer and it gets a little bit of fuel coming out of here, what's it going to do? Start pulling that fuel out. Start pulling that fuel out. Go a little bit, then it's going to go more and more. And then what's the engine going to actually do? What's that? Sustain. Well, what RPM am I going to hit? Uh, oh, at least red line. Oh, yeah. There's no, there's no throttle. There's no nothing, man. It just, you know. So this thing starts to bark and take off, and it's belching black smoke and running like crap, and you know. So carb monkey over here. Whoop! What is it going on here? Why did I do that? Carb monkey takes a big crap, all right? Because it scares the hell out of me. It's right there by the prop, man. So carb monkey is not happy. So. Carb Monkey, uh, he runs off into the jungle, and he's out of there, so we can't have Carb Monkey. So fail, fail with Carb Monkey, but we still got to have our fuel at this level. So let's see, where's Brown on here? It's probably back towards the orange right there, kind of the middle. There, is that Brown? Maybe. It's Brown enough. That was Brown enough. Well, well, do that. Sure. I don't know. I was able to do this earlier. There we go, Brown. All right, Brown. So we're going to go with uh, a coconut. Coconut. All right, so we got a. Oops. Put the coconut over here. And the coconut, of course, has got to be on a little full on an arm with a fulcrum and a needle and a seat. And then we can't have this over here, All right? It's got to come down. I really do, boy. Yeah. I'm not loving this. All right. Oops. <laughs> Hold up. Hold up. You twisted your fuel line. All right. There we go. All right. So we've got coconut toilet bowl technology going on here. And so now whenever the fuel level starts to drop, the float will drop, lifting up this little needle and seat and allow the fuel to come in. Yes? Yes. yes. All right. So, I'm going to brush it. All right, fuel comes through. So now we understand what the float's doing, yeah? Yeah. All right, so the thing about the float is you have to measure this float while I'm thinking about it. And so if you have a carburetor, you guys will be measuring the float. And... You're supposed to measure it from, well, this, we'll say this line right here, right there, right there, from the parting flange down. Well, if the fuel is supposed to be here, 
and you measure it, let's say that's, oh, I don't know, 0.25 of an inch down. And you measure it, and you get 0.35. Does that mean the float level is high or low? Low. low. Uh, some of you guys are telling me the other way around. If it's at 0.35, it must be down here then, right? Uh -huh. All right. So a bigger number means it is lower because you're measuring it from here. Ah, okay. So if your float level is too low, how are we going to get it to go up? We can adjust the seat. What do we want to do? Raise the seat or lower the seat? Raise. Lower the seat. Well, let's think about that. If the if the seat was way up here. If you lower the seat, it's going to increase. Yeah. If we, so if we lower the seat. It'll increase the level. If we put it down here. And raise the float up higher. Then this has to go way up here before this touches that, right? Mm -hmm. So to lower the seat or to, to lower the level, we must. Or sorry, try it again. To raise the level. To raise the level. The <laughs> to raise the level, we lower the seat. Mm -hmm. Got it? Yes. Let's try it again. To if I need if my fuel level is the red, mm -hmm. and I want it to be blue, that means I need it to shut off later. So to shut it off later, I got to bring the seat way down here. So if I bring it way down there, it's kind of small. I didn't realize it. All right. So if I bring the seat down, then this float has to go way up here to bring this way down. All right. Depending on where the fulcrum is, it could be a one-to-one -one ratio or not a one-to-one -one ratio. So you have to look at that. Yeah, so what if it was way over here, the fulcrum? That would be very different. Yeah. So a little bit of float movement would equal more here. Well, if it's over this way a little bit, it may be a little bit different. So just so happens that the Stromberg is not a one-to-one -one ratio. It is five to one or one to five. I'll go five to one. Five to one. So for every one that you move the seat, it's going to move the fuel by five. So you got to watch for that. Okay. While I was thinking about it. All right. It's harder to erase than I thought. Okay. We follow so far? Yep. All right. So we've got carb monkey out of the picture. We've now control this. Now we got, now we have fuel going on here. All right, so the fuel level is at the proper level. Actually, I guess it's got to be up here, no, not to scale. All right, so it fills all this up just right. Fuel comes through there. It's sitting just about there. And we're going to give it a shot. Well, you need a throttle. You need a butterfly. Why is that? Because you need to control the RPM. All right, so, we, so we, how are we going to make one of those? Just a slice of coconut? Slash, yeah. Slice of coconut. All right. Let me take a leaf. I'd say the blue cut a bit out of the bamboo. 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 All right. So we got a throttle valve. Now, the throttle valve, I've got it sitting in the Venturi, which isn't quite right, but it sits above it. Let's see here. works. All right. Like that. There we go. Valve right here. Let me see. There we go. <clears throat> Never mind the fact that I'll bump into that. That's okay. Just out of room. So, okay. So we want to try this now. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. What's going to happen? So you're going to start it. To start it. And then what? There's not going to be enough suction stick. Still not. It's still not going to work. Yeah. No. No. You need to have it idle. So it's not working. We'll try opening the throttle up. We'll prime it. Yeah. Oh, the thing is still have to delay in the field. You can prime it. Okay. So you run it off the primer. Uh -huh. Acceleration. Run it off the primer with the throttle wide open. Yeah. Is it going to work? It will. 
Okay, if you can start it off the primer, got it going. It won't idle. Won't, definitely won't idle, but it'll run wide open. Yeah. Is it going to run well? No. no. It's going to run absolutely horrible. Yep. Be rich. Be super rich. rich. So rich, it's belching up black smoke, hardly any power, chugging. How come it's running so rich? We're getting way too much fuel. We got to we got to do something with this fuel. Well, how are we going to control that? Well, how about the fact that we just have so much fuel here? We need a metering jet, so we need to make some sort of restriction. This is really obnoxious. I hate this program now. Go back to the board. Okay, we make a restriction here. What, what is this restriction doing? It's creating a pressure. No pressure differential. What is it? Limit the max amount of fuel flow with the uh, max throttle. Okay, at max throttle, this right here, the main metering jet, limits the absolute amount of fuel that can go through it. Now the main metering jet really only works or does its job at wide open throttle when the maximum amount of fuel is going. Anything less than that and the main metering jet just looks too big. Do you follow that? Yeah. So if we could idle it at this, the main metering jet's like it's too big. It's not limiting the fuel. Too much fuel would get in, but that's where the air comes in. Uh, okay, so we got a main metering jet. I want to try it again. Will it work? Okay, kind of, it works better. I mean, we're getting somewhere, but it's just, it's not running well. Okay, well, let me ask you this. So if we've got the main metering jet correct, do we have the correct mixture? No. no. Why not? Because you need an air bleed to measure how much air is going in there. Well. You do not need an air bleed, does not measure anything. Do we have too much fuel or too much air then? Too much fuel. I think it's not too much fuel. So, what do we need to do to get rid of fuel? To disperse it, you know, mix it up. Oh, you're telling me we have too much fuel, so we either need to add more air and it's wide open. So the only way we can add more air is to make the Venturi now bigger, make the throat bigger. That's it. Add a supercharger. Adjustable metering. Well, I, think about it. You're telling me it's too rich, so that means I need to either get rid of fuel or add air. If you want to get rid of fuel, then we can. Then our choices are simple. Make the main meter. Okay, so make it now. Is it running fine now? Better. Yeah, but not at high RPM. You're going to be too lean. You're not going to have enough fuel. Why are we too lean? Because you won't have It's too small in the orifice. Why? Because Michael just made it smaller? Yes. Okay, well, then we put the, put the main metering jet back. This is why nothing gets done by committees. So, main metering jet is back to where it was. Metering jet monkey. How does it work? Uh, metering jet monkey. Give it a mixture control. Why? Because it's on the ground. Shouldn't it work? I mean, yeah. where, where should your mixture control be when you're sitting out here on the ground getting ready to take off? Rich. Right. If it's anything other than that at sea level, you got a car problem. Yeah. So the manual mixture control is used when? Uh, Are we at altitude? Yeah. No. Crashed on an island, and it, so should be pretty close to sea level. So clearly a mixture control is not something that we need. Okay, so we run it. So what I did, I ran it, and I asked you guys, what do you think it's going to do? It run. runs great. It does not run great. Uh, no. <laughs> it's, good at it. it's not going to run great. Now here's the problem. Some people say it's going to run rich, and some people say it's going to run lean. You'd think we'd know this. Some books will tell you that the problem we have is fuel is going to be coming out of here in what state? Droplets. 
it's not going to be atomized. atomized. It's going to be coming out in streams. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's not atomized. So if the fuel is not atomized, it then it's burn. not usable. It if it's not usable and not burning, then that would tell me you don't have enough, and so it would act like it's going to run lean, would it not? So that's why you would add air to the fuel to disperse it more. Okay. To spread it out. But at the same time, okay. it's going to have a problem coming out of the nozzle. It's going to go on a stick in the nozzle. Right? So if it's sticking in the nozzle, not wanting to come out of the nozzle, that's going to be rich or lean. Okay, so I just said that we had fuel that is not atomizing, therefore it's unburnable, therefore it's not counted, so it's lean. Doesn't want to come out of the nozzle very well, so it sticks in there, that would make it also lean. Okay, so we got a, something's going on with this fuel, it's not coming out of the nozzle. So we need to add something that's going to help this fuel actually come out of the nozzle. And when it's coming out, it would be coming out in giant clumps and balls instead of this nice little mist coming out. Okay, we got it. Okay, so adding air is going to do something called emulsify the fuel. All right, so, so we need to add some sort of emulsification system here. So how are we going to do that? Tube, an air tube. All right. So, where would I want to run this air tube out to? What kind of air should it be? Ambient. Well, where's the best place to get ambient air? From the atmosphere. Behind the Venturi. So, all right. So we'll do that, and we have to put a little restriction right there. Yellow, okay. Yellow's a bad color, isn't it? It was a terrible color. All right, so there we go. Air bleed with a little restriction on the end because we don't want too much. This is horrible. Every time I go past this thing, it changes the. All right, so that's going to allow air. I don't have a color for air. Air to work its way into and mix with the fuel. Now I've got this, this air coming in. Does this air count as part of my, if I said I want a mixture of, of 12 to 1? Nope. Does that count as part of my air? Very little. Yes, but a small amount. An insignificant, non-countable. Yeah. So don't, don't go there. If it's running rich or lean, don't add air here. I say, well, it's running rich. Well, let's just drill a hole here and add more air coming this way. It doesn't work that way. Where does the air come in? From the Venturi. From the Venturi up. Everybody follow? Yes. Okay, I hope so, because this is what I'm hearing. You guys say, oh, no, I just add more air here. No. That is not the 12 part, is not coming in through this. I add a little tiny bit of air into this, and what does it do again? Push that fuel into it, emulsify it. Emulsifies the fuel, helps it go up. There is, I don't know if I have it. You may have, I think this is out of your book. It's kind of a weird thing. Let me see if I have it. Three different diagrams for the water? Yeah, with the person was sucking out the straw. Yeah, it's in the training manual. All right, well, you saw it then. So I don't think I have it. Or if I do, it's somewhere, I don't know. But you know what I'm talking about, which is all that matters. Okay. So... Putting that little hole there helps the fuel to come out in fine droplets, which will then vaporize much easier and allow this to work. So given that, if we could start it on the priming system, would it work? It would. I think it would work quite well. That's a carburetor. I mean, it's just that simple. It really is. It's so simple. All right. What else can we add to this thing to make it more, make it run at idle? So we want to make it run at idle. So let's 
go back here and shut this down. All right, so we want this to run at idle. Now, at idle, we've already discussed the fact that we have basically no air movement or very little air movement through here. Mm -hmm. But what color should air be? I don't even know. Well, we've already started with red. Green. Neon. Green. Red. Green. Yeah. Can't see green very well. Yeah, true. So air is going to still come up this way. But it's going to come through here. Right? That's our idle air. Very little amount. Not a lot. But it's got to come through there. Now, if I drew this correctly, it would all be kind of in a line. This is way too tall for this to be accurate. But we got down here below. What kind of pressure is below the throttle plate now? Uh, Mostly. High at, at idle or right now? Ambient. It's pretty much ambient. A yeah. little less than, but not by a whole lot. So I've got very little air going through the Venturi. And the air pressure is ambient. So it means that, what's the pressure right here? Ambient. Isn't that the thing you take to help you sleep better? Ambient. <laughs> okay. So if this pressure matches this pressure, then we have no fuel, no fuel flow. Okay. So, but what is above the throttle plate? Suction. 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 All right, suction. Suction. I just ran out of room, so I'll just put suck. So yeah. suction. So we do have a lot of suction going on up there. So if we could somehow, somehow run a tube, of course it's not quite right because it's really tall, but if we could run a tube, well, we could just bring it off of here. There's plenty of fuel right here, right? Mm -hmm. If we could run a tube from there, not the best tube in the world. Right, and that should be in level with the fuel, so it should actually be down over here. Well, I can maybe try that. So. Throttle plate's too high, but otherwise I could have done this. There we go. Oops, is that gonna work? Why not? Because you're behind the throttle plate. Still on the wrong side of the throttle, so I gotta go up higher. So go up over the throttle. Up over the throttle. Let's go here. Let's do it like that. There we go. Here are those little things. Okay. So keep in mind, and this is going to be a hard one, you have to conceptualize because the lack of a perfectly good drawing oops, is that this all has to be on the same level. So really, the fuel is going to find its level to right there, isn't it? Okay, so it's not going to work if you have this super tall stand here, but I just don't have the room to write it correctly. So we're going to pretend like it's, you know, it's going to find its level. Or I could just, okay, you follow? Yeah. Okay, so I've got to bring a discharge nozzle up into here. Mm -hmm. All right. Two and two of them? Okay. Yeah. Why two of them? Just because. Uh, no, there's kind of a reason. Just Actually, should have left it on the other side. Let me see. There we go. Let's at least a little better. All right, so if I got one here and one right about there. Okay, I've got two, because you guys wanted to have two. Yep. Why do I want two? One is for to adjust. Yeah, to adjust. Rich. Adjust the richness of your idle system. Uh, not necessarily. So let's think about the fact, what does this idle system have to do? Where is it going to start at? About what uh, RPM? Okay, let's say 700. And it's got to work all the way up to? About 11 to 12. Okay, we'll say 11 to 12. A little fast on both ends, but I would say more like 550 to? 1,000. Eh, he can go up as high as 12. Well, how much fuel does it need at 500 compared to 800, 900? 
Is the fuel amount I need change? Yes. So this has to do that. So at first, there's going to be a lot of low pressure really pulling a lot of fuel out of this one. Not so much out of this one. All right. Now as I open the throttle, open the throttle. Now what? Okay, now it's going to start pulling more out of this one. So now I've got two jets. And you can find them with three or more jets. So that's why you have multiples, because you need to start adding more fuel. Where's the air coming from? Around the throttle. Okay, so as the throttle opens, more air is going to start going around. You get more air, you must add... More fuel. More fuel. Okay. So is this whole thing going to work okay here? Yep. Why? No, it's not. What are we missing? Control. We don't have an air bleed. So what, we're back to the same problem. Air What's the fuel going to do? It's just going to spew out. Well, it's got surface tension. It doesn't want to leave. It won't. It's going to spew out. Yeah. So we got to add some sort of air bleed into here. What was my air? Yeah, so, and the air bleed will just, again, probably the worst carburetor I've ever drawn. Air bleed. It's got its own little air bleed. That's fine. Air bleed comes down and mixes here. Just helps it out. All right. That would work mighty fine. But if you want to get real picky about it, we could add a mixture control. Now, this is an idle mixture control. So it works in idle. idle. Does it work outside of idle? No. Are we sure about this? Yes. You guys are telling me stuff like this during your orals. Better not. Okay. So it only works at idle. idle. So what it is, it's, it's just a little screw that goes in here. The little tapered needle. By the way, these little tapered needles, they're very sensitive. And if you screw it in and tighten it, it puts a nice little crease right there where it hits that seat. So you guys that are sitting there screwing them all the way in and backing them off while you're doing your oral, it's making me crazy. But I don't want to yell at you about it because it's like you're under enough stress. So stop doing that. Those needles are, you just barely, just if you go in enough to get resistance, you've gone... That's far enough. So the little needle just, just blocks a little bit of fuel or allows you to because they just drill these passageways at the factory and they're like, okay, well, there you go. Well, maybe it was too big. Maybe, you know, the castings are all the same. So this one goes on an O200, this one goes on an O300, this goes on 170, they're good, you know, and so we have to have some way to adjust this. So we have that little screw that goes in there. That little screw for the idle mixture only works in what time? Idle. Idle. And what does that screw do? Well, there's the amount of fuel going through that little one. Top down It enriches or leans out your fuel and air that's going out into your top. So it makes the engine go faster or slower? No. That's your idle speed. Are you sure? Yes. You guys should tell me this. No. Does the idle mixture make it speed up? It can. You can have a bifact of that. Yeah. We go back to our power curve. Yeah. And if you're super rich and you actually get it to the right spot, what's the engine going to do? It's going to increase. It's going to increase. If you have it way too lean and you back it out a little bit and enrich in it, the engine will, increase by default, increase RPM. So if I said, oh, man, my engine's running a little bit too fast, who's the super mechanic to go, I know. I'll just make it run so rich that it slows down. <laughs> I'll lean it out until it barely runs. Are you happy now? Is that what we want to do? No. Are we sure about this? This is what I'm hearing out there. I say, well, exactly how are you going to adjust the idle speed? I'm going to take this screw right here, this big one that's for the mixture, and I'm going to screw it out. It's going to take it all the way out for you. Yeah. Why would you do that? So the idle mixture does what again? Changes the idle mixture. 
Oh, so everybody's involved in this. It does what? <laughs> Idle mixture. Is that supposed to increase or decrease the speed? No. no. Okay. Can it? Yes. Yeah, if you screw it up bad enough, it will. It really will. If you're within that very narrow range where it's supposed to be, you won't really notice it by much. I mean, a little tiny bit. So, all right. So how do you adjust the idle speed? With the stop screw on the, on the throttle plane. By how much? We open the butterfly a little bit more. That's what it's called, the butterfly valve. Butterfly. Right? The throttle valve. If you open the, th open the throttle valve, what does the, air, what does the engine do? More air. More air. More air, therefore it sucks more fuel, therefore the RPM goes uh, up. So how could a pilot, just an idiot pilot, and, the, and the, it's idling a little bit too low, and they want to increase the RPM without actually getting out of the airplane. How could they do that? Give them more throttle. Push the throttle a little bit. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Okay. So... What are you as a mechanic doing when they complain every time I pull it back, it dies, so I have to push it in a little bit. What are you doing? Changing the idle speed. How? What are you, what are you actually the doing? Stop. Your, your stop stop screw. Yeah, changing where the, the where butterfly, butterfly is going to be open. Right. So if you were to actually turn the screw in and watch the throttle in the airplane, you would see it move in to go faster. It would pull out. So you're just making it so they can't pull it back so far. That's all it is. It's a little stop screw. All right? So you're just changing a stop screw. Idle mixture. Mixture at idle. It's for when? Mixture at idle. Idle. So how well does it work above 1,000 RPM? It doesn't. It doesn't do anything because the fuel stops flowing out of here. It looks a lot nicer on my screen. <laughs> This can't look much worse than that. Sorry. Maybe this is one of those things I should do on the board. It looks pretty good on this one. Yeah. I could, because on the board, I would have been like that big. I make it the whole board, and it makes more sense. Okay. Um, I don't know how to make it, like, bigger. So, all right. So, we got that. I hope I got that. That's a carburetor. I just don't know what to say. That is it. I mean, we just drew a whole carburetor. Regular Okay, so that is the only thing that I didn't put in there is a regular mixture control. All right, so to get off this island, we don't need to go very high, but if you want to go high, you've got to have some sort of mixture control. Now, there's a couple ways to do it. The simplest way to do it would be to put a variable orifice right here. <coughs> And I don't know, um, it would be like a, a, a valve that looks like this one here, but yeah, we can do that. Let me see. We'll just make it look like that. A valve that just looks like that, connected to a, a cockpit control. So what happens is we have the size of the main metering jet, okay? And as long as this valve here is bigger than the main metering jet, that valve does nothing. Mm -hmm. But we get up and we're flying along at a very high altitude and in reality this main metering jet is now too big. How many, how many of you guys rode motorcycles and, and went up high altitude biking and you changed the, the jets in your bike? Nope. Wow, I'm but, like all alone in this one. I Thank you. But you know what I'm talking about. So yeah, so I had a, a Honda 250R and we would go up ride in the mountain, you know, way up in the mountains, and so I'm going to ride down here. So I had different jets. So we, hey, we're going to go up to Sand Mountain. I think that's a high altitude desert. And so I'd pop out the smaller, the uh, big jet and put in a smaller jet. Okay, so it's the same thing. That's the main metering jet. I'd want a smaller one for high altitude and a bigger one for low altitude. Everybody follow? Mm -hmm. Well, it's really kind of hard to do that in an airplane. Hey, where do you think you're going to fly today? I think I'm going to go to 10,000 feet. Well, let's change out your main metering jet. Wait a minute. i got to take off at sea level. Oh, we got a problem. All right, so what we're going to do is go really, really high, and then you're going to shut the engine off, and then while you're gliding back down, I'll That's fix fine. it, you know. All right, so all we're doing is if we add this valve down in here, we're changing it so that at some point we can start closing that valve. And when this valve gets smaller than the main metering jet, now this one, the valve here, does all of the metering. And so I just made a smaller main metering jet. Boom. There you go. 
That's Marvel shovelers. That's how they do it. How can I shut this carburetor off? Close. Just close this right there. Shuts it down. It's exactly what we're doing. Just close that. No fuel goes. Carburetor off. Well, Stromberg, the one you're working on, they make things a little more complicated. And it might be easier if I don't draw it, but go to the drawing. You want to take a break first? Yeah. Okay. Yeah.